happening this morning as we take a live look at Pat Hurley Park. APD mobile surveillance cameras are back up there after a teen was shot dead at the city park yesterday. And this is only one way that APD is trying to curb crime involving kids. Yeah, the most recent at Pat Hurley Park around 2 yesterday morning. Police told a group of juveniles at the park to go home because it was after park curfew. Now, soon after that, gunshots rang out. 14-year-old Isaiah Albright was shot and killed. Two other teens injured. Just this month, you might remember six kids were charged with the death of an Albuquerque man. APD says one of the suspects claimed the group was out mobbing. That means breaking into cars and homes. Back in May, a 15-year-old was shot in the air at Tower Skate Park in the South Valley. And family members are still mourning the death of 17-year-old Jaquise Lewis. He was, the 17-year-old was shot at Los Altos Skate Park back in March. In addition to the mobile surveillance cameras, APD officers are making extra patrols. This morning, they're also telling parents to be parents and not let their kids roam around late into the night. Residents agree. Pay attention to your kids, man. You're going to lose them if you don't. I think that parents should know where their children are at. Now, the cameras are on the upper level at Pat Turley Park. The citywide curfew at parks is 10 o'clock. On to new facts this morning in a serious crash involving two motorcycle riders and a pickup truck that shut down an I-40 ramp from Unser. This morning, one rider in his 20s is in critical condition after police say he suffered a head injury. His female rider only suffered minor injuries. Albuquerque police say that crash happened as the truck tried to turn on to the I-40 West ramp from Unser. Motorcycle was southbound. No word as to who is at fault or if alcohol is a factor. No injuries reported for the pickup driver this morning. Not to live look over Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Senate is expected to vote on legislation that would overhaul the Secret Service today. The bipartisan bill was approved by the House last night in a 365 to 16 vote. The bill requires the agency to update technology and increase training for agents. It also authorizes the hiring of more agents. Time now is coming up on 504. Hot weather is expected to make firefighters' efforts to contain a California wildfire even more difficult today. At least eight fires are burning across the state right now. Cal Fire issued a red flag warning for parts of Northern California overnight. Two of the major blazes are threatening thousands of homes near Fresno and Sacramento. Authorities say temperatures in that region could climb up to 100 degrees this week, which is not the most ideal condition for a firefighter. Looking toward the future, one California investor says he sees a lot of potential for a new vacant metro property. Yeah, News 13's Catherine Mazzone explains why he's had his eye on New Mexico for a while. Not everyone could see the potential in these four buildings, but one California investor did. You know, what it is, where it is, the type of property that it is. Greg Herbert says those qualities made the 22-acre property a good fit for his company. A business with nationwide reach aimed towards revitalizing real estate. Part of our game plan here is to reestablish the property, which we've done into the marketplace. They used to be administrative offices for Presbyterian. Now these buildings are back on the market awaiting new tenants. And already, Herbert says they're getting a lot of eyes. It's very pleased with the interest to date that we have in this, uh, in this property. But Herbert's not surprised. He says he's been wanting to invest in New Mexico for several years now. A, because of the size of the real estate. Uh, B, because of the size of the market. Not only did Herbert see potential in this property, he also sees potential in New Mexico's commercial real estate market. He says it's big enough for them to expand. And in a state where the economy has been slow to recover since the recession, Herbert says things are only looking up. The market continues to you know, gradually improve. Uh, uh, you know, as time goes on. Plus, it didn't hurt that Herbert felt welcomed in New Mexico, especially after several meetings with some of Albuquerque's government officials. People, part of why we're there is a big part of it. I mean, there's, there's properties that I look at in other parts of the country where the real estate on its own really fits us well, but I, I didn't have the confidence in the, uh, you know, as, as a new investor in the state. Not like the confidence he says he has in New Mexico. Catherine Mazzone, KRQE News 13. And Herbert says another draw was a proximity to his offices in Los Angeles. It's just a short flight away. 506, and as you wake up today, Albuquerque police are looking for the man who held up an APQ interlock shop. They consider him armed and dangerous this morning. The robbery happened about four yesterday in Northeast Albuquerque. Police say a man walked into the business with a towel around his face demanding money. 
He fired a shot into the ceiling and then took off in a white Ford truck again, according to police. And this morning, we now know when the Santa Fe man accused of throwing a banana at comedian Dave Chappelle will stand trial. Prosecutors say the case will get underway next month. Christian Englander is charged with disturbing the peace and battery. He was arrested back in March as Chappelle performed at the Lensic. If convicted, Englander faces up to six months in jail. We turn out to news happening today. The woman accused of helping two murderers break out of prison is expected in court for her arraignment. Joyce Mitchell's lawyer says she's hoping for a plea deal. Police say the 51-year-old was working as a tailor shop instructor that was at the Clinton Correctional in New York when she gave David Sweat and Richard Matt tools to escape. She also allegedly agreed to be their getaway driver, but chickened out and never showed up. The pair was on the run for three weeks before police shot and killed Matt. Sweat was captured alive and is back behind bars this morning at a different prison. There's some shocking video that shows a mother falling to her death, but not before she saves her toddler son. Security cameras show the mother and boy riding on an escalator in a Chinese shopping mall. Right as she's about to step off, a metal panel collapses. That was right under her feet. She pushes the boy forward as an employee grabs him. Two other mall workers tried to drag her out, but within a few seconds, she disappeared through that hole into the escalator shaft. It's tough to watch, I know, but a maintenance worker reportedly forgot to replace the screws after they'd done some work on that escalator. Oh, that is terrifying. Yep. Heartbreaking. We turn out to this. A Utah man is facing several felonies this morning after this fight right here with the deputy. Dash cam video shows a deputy pulling over the man for skating down the middle of a busy street in Salt Lake City. Now, when the deputy asks for his name, the man refuses and tries to take off. That's when the deputy gives chase. The man turns around and attacks him right there, putting the lawman in a chokehold. But a passing doctor and a firefighter, they swoop in to help out. The three eventually get that man under control. The deputy is doing okay this morning. Meanwhile, the man is facing assault on a peace officer and resisting arrest charges. And, you know, we're seeing it more and more good Samaritans just really stepping in and helping out. Rushing in to help right in the nick of time. That's mm -hmm. absolutely right. Thanks, Kristen. Developing this morning, an Albuquerque firefighter is under internal investigation for how he handled a desperate 911 call. Late last month, bullets were fired at a home near Lomas and Tramway. One of them hit 17 year old Manzano High School student Jaden Chavez Silver inside. In a 911 recording, you can hear the frantic attempts to save his life. Albuquerque firefighter Matthew Sanchez, who AFD says is seen here, was working in the dispatch center and took that call. Is he breathing? He's barely breathing. How many times is the f tell you? Okay, you know what, ma'am? You can deal with yourself. I'm not going to deal with this, okay? No, I can't just die. I need Sanchez hangs up and Jaden later died. AFD says Sanchez is now on administrative assignment. Fire Chief David Downey said in a statement that he's, quote, taking the allegation very seriously. A family spokesperson tells us that call was devastating to listen to, but says the family is focusing on catching the people responsible for Jaden's death. The family's put up a reward of up to $4,000 for anyone with information on how he, how he died. Not to this new this morning, police in California believe they may have found the body of a missing eight year old girl and a 15 year old is under arrest being questioned for his possible involvement. This is extraordinarily heartbreaking news that I'm about to give to you. Our detectives discovered the body of a young female inside of a dumpster at the complex located behind me. Yeah, no doubt this is tragic news. No parent ever wants to hear. The little girl was last seen on surveillance video Sunday afternoon riding her new scooter in the courtyard of the Santa Cruz Artist Community and Housing Center. That's where she lived with her mother. Neighbors say this woman is the mother of a 15 year old boy who was arrested in connection with the case. He also lives in that complex. He's very well spoken and has a very kind manner. So, like I said, it's just a shocking situation altogether. So the discovery of the body followed an extensive search of the neighborhood, nearby parks and woods and the coastline. Angered this morning after a plaque to remember the victims of the Hollywood video massacre in Albuquerque has gone missing. In 1996, three employees and the grandparents of one of those employees were killed during a robbery at the store at San Mateo and Zuni. Two years after the murders, Hollywood Video placed a plaque and a garden to remember the victims. Since then, the video store has been replaced with other shops and that memorial has vanished. The mother of one of the victims told us through Facebook she's angry that that memorial is gone. It's unclear who took it down.
We turn on to this 54 year old Leonard Cortez remains behind bars this morning, charged with the murder of 49 year old Peggy Supadilla. Padilla was found in her driveway early yesterday morning in Arroyo Seco. Investigators believe she was hit by a car. Cortez has been booked into the Santa Fe County Detention Center on a no bond hold. Developing this morning, a Santa Fe jewelry store is keeping a watchful eye on its merchandise after criminals keep taking off with jewelry. In the most recent case, the owner of Earthfire Gems Gallery captured this man seen walking in, looking over the counter on video. He then grabs the tray and takes off with nearly $50,000 worth of gold rings. Santa Fe police are hoping with a clear image of this person, you can help identify that thief. 535 also developing this morning in Albuquerque girl's desperate search to find her missing therapy dog. When Meadows' older sister died after a long battle with bipolar disorder, Meadows started having panic attacks and her mother says they got Pixie to help her. But Pixie ran off from their home near Coors and Montaigne. All I could talk about was my sister. And now all I could talk about was Pixie. That family says they now think someone picked her up. Pixie has a collar with tags. The family also says she has a hernia and needs medical attention soon. We turn out to this in just a few weeks. School will be back in session, but the school bell will ring much earlier for APS high schoolers this coming year. APS posted changes to its bell schedule for all schools. All high schools will begin five minutes earlier and passing periods will be shorter. APS says the changes were needed to allow more classroom time. Uh, we posted the information for all grades on our KRQE News app. We turn out to news happening this week and a more convenient way for parents to get their kids their vaccinations before school starts. Starting on Saturday, parents can bring their kids insurance card and immunization records to participating public health clinics. Now, if you do not have insurance, many of the clinics will offer them for free. The program runs until August 15th. For details, go to our website, krqe.com. There are new facts this morning regarding premature babies and how they handle emotions later in life. Researchers in Germany report very premature babies face a higher risk of emotional problems as adults. That study focused on about 400 young people. They found the group born severely underweight was more socially withdrawn and had trouble making friends and staying in a long-term relationship. Mm. Very interesting what research can reveal. New on this Tuesday morning, the Mormon Church is now reevaluating their Boy Scout program. Yeah, this as the Mormon Church is threatening to form its own organization to replace the Boy Scouts of America after its decision to lift a ban on gay scout leaders. The decision Monday does allow religious backed scout groups to deny leadership positions based on sexual orientation. Still, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints says it's deeply troubled by this new policy. There's no, some new video this morning you got to see here. A Massachusetts police detective is on administrative leave after he was recorded threatening a driver during a traffic stop. That driver says he made a wrong turn on an unfamiliar road when an officer came at him, pulling him over and threatening him with a gun. You're lucky I'm a cop because I'm beating the f out of you right now. Jeez. Give me a license. I just want to let you Give know. Give me a license. I also want to let you know. Give me a license. Okay, I just want to let you know I also have a dash camera. That off-duty officer has been investigated for another arrest made in 2012. Driver says he doesn't feel comfortable going to police knowing one of its own officers acted so unprofessionally. You never know who's recording. I know it. He got that on camera.